Hey guys, welcome back to San Diego Comic Con. I'm Justin Tyler for Newsarama, talking to Joe Hill and Gabriel Rodriguez. So excited to have you here, guys. Justin, thanks for talking to us. So excited to be here. Yeah. In fact, it's it's great to be in Comic Con. I know it must be so nice. You had a great line. That exclusive book for the con looks oh. awesome. We're, it's a thrill. I mean, this is great. You know, for me, I mean, just walking around, it's like this is like Disneyland. Oh, this yeah. is better than Disneyland. No, it's great to, to have the chance to say thank you to all the people that's been supporting the series and buying the books and reading them and enjoying them. So have this chance to have the feedback with them, it's, it's great. It's a pleasure. That's so cool. So uh, Omega is the big news yes. here. Bringing it to a close, everyone's going to be very sad very soon is what you're saying. Oh, everyone's going to be very sad, all right. When they when they see how we're wrapping up, they'll be like, why the hell did we read 37 <laughs> issues of this shit? Oh, oh, oh <laughs> sorry. No, 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 no. Yeah, you know. Save for the end. Yeah, <laughs> right. The, um, the, uh, I do think that, that, um, that readers like closure. That, you know, I mean, they get into something and they don't want it to ever end, but on the other hand, you know, if the alternative never ending is just piling on more and more yeah. mystery. And after a while, the reader is going, ah, this is all crap. They're just yeah. making it up as they go along. There are no solutions here. Yeah. Just, you know, and so we don't, it's important not to just live for the big reveal. Right. You know, you also want to wrap things up in a way that, that where the plot questions are solved, but more importantly, where you get emotional closure for each of the characters. And um, I mean, this is a totally random aside, but I think the reason everyone loves Avengers and loves Joss Whedon is because he finds a way to give each character Character their moment, you know, right. and I and I think that that's that's what we want for the end of Omega. We for want to try at least. Yeah. Uh, for me, one of the the things that was more more appealing of this project from the very beginning is that it, it was going to be a story with an ending. Mm. We're going to have plenty of time to develop our characters and develop the mythology and the story, but we're going to try to drive it to a satisfying ending for us as creator and hopefully for readers as, 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 as supporters of this series with yeah. all the patience they have been having with us all this year. So I think it's it's going to be a sort of celebration of what we've been doing all these years with Lock and Key to give it the best ending we, we could be able to, to yeah. create. That's great. You're throwing an awesome party for yourselves and everyone else who's uh, been around. <laughs> That's about it. You know, the truth is, though, as we keep talking about lock and key ending, um, but in a way, there will be more lock and key. Um, we've already started talking about um, the big story about Tyler and Dodge mm, yes. is going to end. Yes. But there, there is actually going to be a seventh book, which will be called Lock and Key, The Golden Age, and we'll, we'll collect a series of one-shots like Open the Moon and Grindhouse. House to wind up being about six of these, um, and they won't—they won't actually be about the main lock and key crew, but about earlier inhabitants of the yeah, house. About the world. And we it, have 300 years of history of the locks, so there's a lot of room to explore. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and 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 you know, and I think for for Gabe and I both, you know, we really love those Sandman books, which are really just collections of one shots um, right. you know and so we wanted to have something like that where the casual reader could just leap in and have a bunch of great little fables uh -huh. so we're that's what we're doing with the seventh book and if, for those of us that are addicted to the series it's nice to get a little taste uh, to keep the the party going yeah I mean, I think eventually Gabe and I have other projects we want to work on. We have other creator-owned stuff. We have some. We have a licensed character we want to jump into and play around with. Yeah. Um, but but you know, we've already talked. Oh, maybe in three or four years after Lock and Key is is done, we could come back and tell a World War II story called Battleground that uh -huh. that has some stuff that figures into the modern day stories. And so yeah. that would be a nice story to go back and tell. And uh -huh. it is an old house, and there are a lot of stories. There's been yeah. a lot of blood splashed on those walls. <laughs> and you know, I don't know if we can ever get around to explaining how all of it got there. Right. Uh, do you guys have a favorite key uh, throughout That's the a tough series? Question, but. Uh Right now, I, I could say that my favorite key is, is the moon key because the the one shot, the open the moon story. It's uh, I think it's one of the the best achievement we have had oh, so far in the so series. Sad. Yeah, but it's so, so beautifully good. sad. It it's it's, yeah. it's uh, I, I really really I, I fell in love with the key because of what represents in the in the whole mythology. Um. For me, the for me, my favorite key is always the next one we haven't written about yet that we're going to be able to write about next. I mean, you know, we 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 get together. Gabe and I get a chance to get together in the flesh about twice a year if yeah. we're lucky, and we spend most of the time brainstorming new keys and new ideas for <laughs> stories so cool. and stuff. So I've already got a head full of like three or four different stories that I want to write with this key, that key, and you know, and so. And once the series ends, you can still call each other and be like, "What if there was a key that made us be friends? We can meet up in the middle of." <laughs> that would be awesome. Dar very darling. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Um, and what else are you guys 
announcing here. Are you doing anything? Uh, well, there's two things, two other announcements. Well, yeah. One is that um, um, we're going to be talking about Wraith. Um, I have a no new novel coming out called Nosferatu next year, and that's actually NOS 4A2, and it's the bad guy's license plate. And it's a story <laughs> about a bad man with a bad car, a guy named Charlie Manx who takes children in his Rolls Royce Wraith to a place called Christmas Land. And when oh. he lets them out in Christmas Land, they're not the same anymore. Um, <laughs> and so, and so um, Nosferatu is a big book. It's as big as my first two novels put together. Oh, wow. um, and, but even still, there's more story to tell. And so there's also going to be a comic book series that will tell a story set in Christmas Land that's not in the novel. Um, and, and Gabe has done some work on that. He's going to keep his hand in. And, and you know, so that should be fun. Um, and then the other news that, that, that's just, that we're talking about is we're talking about Horns. Uh, my second novel, uh, Horns, is being made into a film. Yeah. Um, that'll uh, that'll start. Yeah. It's yeah. it's Alexandra Aja uh, uh, is going to be directing. They'll start oh. filming this fall, and Daniel Radcliffe is going to star as uh, the oh, lead. Oh man, that's huge news. Yeah, yeah, it's very exciting. That's very great. exciting. So, um, you know, fingers crossed. I, I you know everyone's going to work real hard, and hopefully we'll make a, a great fun film. That's so cool. You know. And uh, one last thing, um, I do a show called Comic Book Club, as many of you know, and you've included Alex Zalbin uh, yeah. in the book, in Lock and Key. There is, an odd, there is a guy who looks oddly like Alex yeah, Zalbin as a doctor. Yeah. Strange coincidence. And he does, and he does actually, is actually named Dr. Zalbin, and I don't yeah. know, but coincidences yeah, happen, all characters are coincidental. That's true, right? it's yeah. very true. Uh, but I'm afraid they will keep happening. It's, yeah. it's, it's one of the mysterious things about Lock and Key. Yeah. I think you, you know, yeah. stuff happens, you see stuff, and before you know it, you know. It appears. Yeah. It appears, it appears. You know so I do think there's, I mean, there is, for example, in Omega, there is a character, if you look close, kind of looks a little bit like this dude, Pete LePage. Who's oh, Pete LePage. Oh, oh, good. So you have Zalbin yeah. and LePage. Oh, yeah. cool. You that's know. good. Those are great and guys. And that's it. Yeah. I mean, those are the guys who run the show, right? I mean, those yeah. are really the guys who yeah. say the interesting oh, stuff. But, but and surely. Then and then there's another guy who's like, What's he doing? Grab coffee and stuff for them or something? Yeah, like that? he's more of an intern than anything. Yeah, right. They're, right. Like the There's the intern and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. So, you right. know, and. Uh, well, maybe just like in a long, a big panel, there can be one guy way in a distant town that's just like. We have hey. plans for you. you know? We have plans for you, my friend. We guys. We have plans anyway, so get ready. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my key has just come true <laughs> the key into the comic book. Uh, <laughs> thanks for talking, guys. I'll let you get on your way. It was always awesome. a pleasure. So you guys are so okay. cool. Rock you, on, man. You guys stay tuned for plenty more from Comic Con.